Welcome back to the final part of our video series on recurrent neural networks and today we want to talk a bit about sampling of recurrent neural networks. And that's why we also have been um, doing other things, non-universal things such as recurrent neural networks. And when I mean sampling, I mean that we want to use recurrent neural networks to actually generate sequences of symbols. So how can we actually do that? Well, if you train your neural networks in the right way, you can actually create them in a way that they predict the probability distribution of the next element. So if I train them to predict the next symbol in the sequence, you can also use them actually for generating sequences. And the idea here is that you start with the empty symbol and then you use the RNN to generate some output and then you take this output and put it into the next state's input. And if you go ahead and do so, then you can see that you can actually generate whole sequences from your trained recurrent neural network. So the simple strategy is to perform a greedy search. So here we start with the empty symbol and then we just pick the most likely element as the input to the RNN in the next state and generate the next one and the next one and the next one. And this then generates exactly one sample sequence per experiment. So this would be a greedy search and you can see that we exactly get one sentence that is constructed here and the sentence that we are constructing here is let's go through time. Well the drawback is of course there's no look ahead possible. So let's maybe the most likely after let's go. So you could be generating loops like let's go, let's go and so on. So you're not able to detect that let's go through time has a higher total probability. So it tends to repeat sequences of frequent words and the sum and so on in speech. And now we are interested in alleviating this problem and this can be done with a beam surge. Now the beam surge's concept is to select the k most likely elements and k is essentially the beam width or size. So here you then out of all possible sequences you have the one with these k elements as prefix and take the k most probable ones. So in the example that we show here on the right hand side we start with the empty word and then we take the two most likely ones which would be let's and through and then we generate let's as the next one if we take through. If we take let's we generate go and we can continue this process and with our beam of size 2 we can keep the two most likely sequences in the beam search. So now we generate two sequences at a time. One is let's go through time and the other one is through let's go time. So you see that we can use this beam idea to generate multiple sequences and then in the end we can determine which one we like best or which one generated the most total probability. So we can generate multiple sequences in one go which typically then also contains better sequences than in the greedy search and I would say this is one of the most common techniques actually to sample from an RNN. Of course there's also other things like random sampling and here the idea is that you select the next one according to the output probability distribution. You remember we encoded our vectors as one hot encoded vectors and then we can essentially interpret the output of the RNN as a probability distribution and then sample from this distribution. This then allows us to generate many different sequences. So let's say if LEDs has an output probability of 0.8, it is sampled 8 out of 10 times as the next word. This creates very diverse results and it may look too random. So you see here we get quite diverse results in the sequences that we are generating here. So there's the randomness that you can also observe 
in the generated sequences. To reduce the randomness, you can increase the probability or decrease the probability of probable or less probable words. And this can be done, for example, with temperature sampling. And here you see that we introduce this temperature tau that we then use in order to steer the probability sampling, which is a common technique that you have already seen at various instances in this class. So let's look into some examples. And one thing that I found very interesting is character-based language modeling with RNNs. There's a great blog post by Andrew Karpafi, which we have here as link. I will also put it as a link into the description of this video. And there he essentially trained an RNN for text generation based on Shakespeare, and it's trained on character level. So you only have one character as input, and then you generate the sequence. And it generates very interesting sequences. So here you can see typical examples that have been generated. And let me read this to you. Pandarus, alas, I think he shall be come approached. And the day when little rain would be attained into being never fed and who is but a chain and subjects of his death, I doubt I should not sleep, and so on. So you can see that this is very interesting that the type of language that is generated is very close to Shakespeare, but if you read through these examples, you can see that they are essentially complete nonsense. Still, it's interesting that the tone of the language that is generated is still present in this very typical for Shakespeare. So that's really interesting. And of course, you can generate many, many other things. And one other very nice example that I want to show to you today is composing folk music. So music composition is typically tackled with RNNs. And you can find different examples in literature, also by Eck and Schmidhuber. And the idea then is to use bigger, deeper networks to generate folk music. So what they employ is a character level RNN using ABC format, including generating the title. So one example that I have here is this small piece of music. And yeah, as you can hear, it, it's really folk music. So this is completely automatically generated by an RNN. Interesting, isn't it? If you listen very closely, then you can also hear that folk music may be particularly suited for this because you could argue it's kind of bit of repetitive. Still, it's pretty awesome that the entire song is completely automatically generated. There's actually people meeting, playing computer generated songs like this folk song here on real instruments. Very interesting observation, so I also put the link here for your reference. If you're interested in this, you can listen to many more examples on this website. So there's also RNNs for non-sequential tasks. RNNs can also be used for stationary inputs like image generation. And then the idea is to model the process from rough sketch to final image. And you can see one example here where we start essentially by drawing numbers from blurry to sharp. And in this example, they use an additional attention mechanism telling the network where to look. And this then generates something similar to brush strokes. It actually uses a variational autoencoder, which we will talk about when we talk on the topic of unsupervised deep learning. So let's summarize this a little bit. 
you have seen recurrent neural networks are able to directly model sequential algorithms. You train via truncated backpropagation through time. The simple units suffer extremely from the exploding vanishing gradients and we've seen that the LSTMs and GRUs act as improved RNNs that explicitly model this forgetting and remembering operation. What we haven't talked about is that there's many, many more developments that we can't cover in this short lecture. So it would be interesting also to talk about memory networks, neural Turing machines, and what we only touched at the moment is attention and recurrent neural networks. But we'll talk a bit more about attention in one of the next videos as well. So next time in deep learning, we want to talk about visualization. And in particular, we want to talk about visualizing architectures, the training process, and of course, also the inner workings of the network. And we want to figure out what is actually happening inside the network. And there's quite a few techniques. And to be honest, we've already seen some of them for visualizations earlier in this class. And in this lecture, we will really want to look into those methods and understand how they actually work in order to figure out what's happening inside of deep neural networks. And one interesting observation is that this is also related to neural network art. Another thing that deserves some little more thought is attention mechanisms. And this will also be covered in one of the videos very soon to follow. So I have some comprehensive questions. What's the strength of RNNs compared to feed forward networks? Then, of course, how do you train an RNN? What are the challenges? What's the main idea behind LSTMs? So you should be able to describe like the unrolling of RNNs during the training. You should be able to describe the Elman cell, the LSTM, and the GRU. So these are really crucial things that you should know if you have to take some tests in the very close future. So better be prepared for questions like this ones. Okay, so we have some further reading. There's this very nice blog post by Andrew Kapafi. There is a very cool blog post about CNNs for machine translation that I really recommend reading. And a cool blog post on music generation, which you can also find in the description of this video. And of course, we also have plenty of scientific references. And you see that it's now one, two, three, four, five slides of references and I also put all of those references into the description of this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.